Next up, we have the Coxless Crew. The Coxless Crew are a group of women who rowed the South Pacific Ocean from America to Australia, a whopping 9,200 miles over 257 days to support women that have had to face adversity and overcome life-changing events, specifically walking with the wounded and breast cancer care. The expedition set two world records, the women becoming the first all-female team and the first team of four to row the Pacific Ocean. All that, I reckon, though, is pretty easy compared to the logistics of working out how five girls are going to do a six-minute talk between them. Uh, Liam, the sixth member of the team, she lives in South Africa, so for some lame reason she didn't fly her here to be here tonight. But please welcome Emma, Laura, Isabel, Meg and Natalia. So, for anyone that believed, Al, that being part of a team is easier than being on your own, this is just one of the many logistical challenges involved. Um, so, you can never cross an ocean unless you have the courage to lose sight of the shore. And to us as a team, that means being prepared to step outside of your comfort zones, which is something that we definitely did whilst crossing the ocean on our 29-foot boat, Doris. Doris was our bulletproof, glass fibre, self-writing home for the whole nine months that we spent at sea. And we powered her by rowing in shifts of two hours on, two hours off. Um, and we powered all of our equipment using the power of the sun and the solar panels. So finally, after three years of preparation, on the 20th of April 2015, in the dark, in the early hours of the morning, we finally set off under the Golden Gate Bridge and started our row across the Pacific. 257 days, nearly 9,000 miles, um, a flood, a storm, a fire, an unexpected return to shore, 40 foot waves, 45 degree heat, and um, yeah, many other challenges. We finally made it to Cairns. So three of the team, Laura, Natalia, and myself, rode the whole journey with Izzy, Lizanne, and Meg switching over in Hawaii and Samoa. And, um, yeah, we stepped off as lifelong friends. As Kenton mentioned, complacency can be the ending of a journey. So you can see us here practicing out at sea our emergency drills so we didn't leave complacency to chance. Um, but one of our biggest things that you'll see tonight, our personalities are very different. Um, we've got planning sort of queen here. We've got somebody who loves variety and spontaneity. So we're completely different. But what we collectively shared together was our team values, which was spirit. And what that means to us is strength, perseverance, integrity, resilience, inspiration, and trust. And strength to us very much means not the physical strength, but the mental strength that we needed. And that was 90% of our journey. And Keith, our sports psychologist for his sins, has <laughs> absolutely helped us huge. He's in this room somewhere. And um, Keith helped us to get across that ocean massively, collectively as a team as an, and as individuals. But secondly as well for us, kind of perseverance was our second team value. And perseverance not only to get to start line, as Emma mentioned, was a, a huge, huge challenge in itself, as it is with any adventure, but also going across the ocean itself, getting back on that, that seat and getting back when you've been knocked off so many times was, was key to sort of getting us to the end, when it ended up being three months longer than we expected. So when we were out there, it was crucial that we were just honest with each other, which is where our third team value of integrity comes in. And um, under Keith's instruction, we had weekly reviews, um, which was an opportunity to just keep each other up to date with how we were doing physically, mentally, and really helped us to know how to support and motivate each other in the team. Um, the way we work as a team is based on openness. So um, if someone or maybe something is annoying us, we just voice it, deal with it, and then move on. Um, Resilience, um, we, just had to have, we just had to have this um, to deal with the seasickness, the sore bums and hands, um, to cope with the heat and the cold, and just to get out there rowing. We're really proud that in the whole nine months, not one shift was missed. Um, inspiration, yeah, we, we drew on different sources of inspiration. We're very lucky to have great supporters at home. Some people sent really amazing personal stories of how they'd crossed their own Pacific, and that really helped us. And we also just were really keen to enjoy our own journey, so we encouraged each other to really appreciate our surroundings and, and everything that was going on. 
Finally, trust. Um, yeah, this was probably our most important team value. We really had to trust in each other and the strength of our team. Um, ultimately, our success and our safety depended on it. This photo honestly does not show you the size or scale of this wave. Me and Nat are clinging on for dear life. You can see the shock in our faces, but it's waves like this that can knock you off your seat, really get your heart rate going. But at the same time, it's waves like this that could and would capsize Doris. But then just imagine all of that at night. You've got those same crazy waves bashing all around the place. It's dark. It's the time of the month when there's no moon. The moon completely disappears. And you don't know what angle the wave is going to hit, where it's coming from, until it's actually on your head. But then there's space. The space inside the cabins. This space is normally only shared in the off shift between two people. But when it's too rough and the waves are huge, we all batten down the cabins, we get inside, we put the power anchor out, and we share this space. Not only was this our office, it was also our lounge, our dining room, our kitchen, but mostly our bedroom. So then there's also privacy, or the lack of it. Here you can see our red bucket, our trusty, trusty toilet. Whilst the waves are bashing around, we're navigating our way to Australia. We perch. We perch on our bucket, but we shout, I need the loo! And you sit down, and you get a bit of bucket and chuck it action. For some adventures, as we've heard tonight, a real highlight for them is the people that they meet along the way. Well, for us, our friendships came in very different forms. Wildlife, for example. This was Fernando. For some reason, all of the sharks that we met had Spanish names. And he followed our boat for over two weeks. We also met passing boats. We communicated them on our VHF radio. And one in particular, the Mokihana here, a 280-meter beast, actually followed our journey, tracked us down, and then came within a quarter of a mile to say hello. But I think the most wonderful thing about our team is that through the highs and the lows, the challenges and the frustrations, the pain and the discomfort, the magical moments, the very miserable moments, we dealt with everything with not only this great spirit that we've talked about, but also with laughter. And this ability to laugh, whether it was at or with one another occasionally was questionable, was the incredible constant throughout our adventure. So in summary, we'd just like to leave you all with this. Believe in yourself and your values. Trust in the strength of your team, your support team, and the people around you. And make sure that you enjoy the journey, whatever journey it is you choose to do, and wherever it may take you. <laughs>